Hey guys, I thought I would check in because I am now one week and a day away from my phalloplasty stage one. I'm getting ready, I'm getting excited. I feel like I've got most of my stuff together at this point. Um, so I figured today what I would do is, well actually I think I have all of my stuff together. Probably some other stuff will come up later, but I think I've got my stuff together. So what I wanted to do today was go through uh, all of the supplies that I'm gonna be bringing with me to Montreal and all of the supplies that I'm gonna be leaving here at my place uh, for once I'm home from the recovery center. Just for anybody who doesn't know, I'm gonna be having stage one phalloplasty with Dr. Belanger in Montreal, Quebec. So let's get right into all of the stuff that I've had to prepare. So if it looks like my place is a mess, it is because there is actually so much stuff that I've been getting ready for for surgery um so i'm gonna go through it i have a list of things that montreal provides that you're supposed to uh, bring with you to the recovery center and a list of stuff that they uh, need you to get and keep at your place for after you're home from the recovery center um, and i also have other items that i added to my personal list that i figured i would share with you all so here are the items that i had to get for my stay at the uh, GRS clinic at the at their um, uh, surgery center and at their recovery house. First off is two fleet enemas. I'm actually going to be using these the night before surgery, so uh, this is more, I guess, for anybody who travel who's traveling uh, quite far to get to Montreal. I'm really lucky that I live only about two hours away from Montreal, so I'm going to be staying at my place and then commuting uh, to the surgery in the morning. The night before, two enemas. Next on their list is a unscented soap. Uh, I decided to get a vino just because I've used it before, so any type of mild unscented soap. So next on the list is a portable mirror to be used for your dressings and just so you can have a look at everything as it's healing. Next is a chlorhexidine-based uh, solution, body wash, or uh, sponges. Hair removal cream uh, to be used for your preparation day. Uh, so they ask that you remove all of your hair from belly button to knees, uh, and you're not to use a razor, so they ask that you use a cream. And the last thing that uh, Montreal specifically recommends is loose-fitting clothes. So this is for your trip to the recovery center. This is the stuff that you're supposed to bring to the center. Next is all of the items that they ask you to uh, get and to leave at home. Number one is a thermometer. Next is some kind of saline solution to be able to clean your wounds every day. Uh, I know some places differ, but Montreal uh, recommends cleaning and redressing the arm once a day. The next thing they ask for is white cotton underwear specifically. Um, I got these a little bit looser than I would need, so they're not very flattering, but this is what they request. So some white cotton underwear. Uh, I also have Separatech underwear, uh, which are supportive as well and fairly loose. So uh, I'm gonna see if I can incorporate those in somehow too, but uh, they specifically asked for white underwear. So that's what I got too. So now I'm gonna get into some of the more uh, wound care stuff. With regards to the wound care items, I actually had a very difficult time finding a lot of this stuff. I recommend looking around online, uh, but that said, you might have to look at a few different places uh, to be able to find everything that you need for your wound care. So first off is a elastic bandage, an ace bandage for your arm dressing. They ask for three inches in width. They also ask for Disposable under pads. So uh, these are incontinence pads that I got from the pharmacy. Next are sterile compresses. So I have uh, three boxes of 20 uh, sterile compresses. So next is three types of cling type bandage rolls. They also ask for two uh, small syringes and needles. So I just am using the same needles that I use for my testosterone injections. I also got some medical tape and uh, polysporin. Next, they ask for a bunch of Telfa-type bandages, as well as adaptic bandages. Um, so this was actually very difficult to find, so I recommend getting on, uh, gathering all of your supplies as soon as possible. And finally, uh, some type of vitamin E cream. A silicone gel would have also worked, or some other kind of healing product that they recommend. So that actually does it for Montreal's list that they give you. If you want an easier place to find this, it's in 
uh, their second booklet, which is up on their website. Uh, so you can go on the GRS Montreal website, uh, go under phalloplasty, and they have three information booklets. And within that, you will find the list of stuff that you need to find and prepare. Next, I'm going to go through all of the stuff that I got that I think I would need. So whether it be entertainment stuff or just other comfort items. Uh, next is a bathrobe. So something to cover yourself with that's nice and easy, that's not difficult to put on. I also got a pack of gloves for my dressing changes, some hot and cold packs, some hot and cold bean bags for comfort. I also got a little uh, scratching device because <laughs> I'm going to have limited mobility. Some kind of a neck pillow. This one's kind of neat. I got it and it like forms around you. So it's got a little bit of firmness to it. So this is going to be great for the car, for the whatever kind of uh, situation you're going to be in. You're going to be sitting and lying down constantly for weeks. So comfort is of the utmost importance. I also got a bunch of baby wipes. Um, I'm not going to be able to bathe for several days after surgery. So uh, sponge bathing with some wipes is going to be very handy and much welcomed. So to go with the baby wipes, I also got some face wipes that are a little bit more gentle for the face. Next, for the ride home, I got this uh, hemorrhoid cushion. Uh, from what I hear, a lot of people have the most pain at the vaginectomy site, um, and sitting can be really difficult at the beginning. So the cushion is basically designed so that uh, the middle anatomy doesn't touch whatever you're sitting on. So this, I think, will be really good for the car ride home, um, and we'll see if I have to use it afterwards uh, in any other situations. I don't have everything here that I would show you, but uh, just a bunch of stuff for entertainment. So books, movies, um, cards, like anything that you can do and try to keep it tailored to one-handed uh, use. So I've got some books that I'm going to bring with me. Um, I'm going to bring my laptop with a bunch of movies and whatnot. I've got all of my services, my streaming services, so entertainment wise I should be covered. In terms of nutrition, I also got a bunch of protein bars and some protein drinks uh, because protein is super important when you're recovering from wounds. Protein is what heals your body, what heals uh, open wounds. So it's super important to have. Uh, you know, you can get this from your diet, from your regular diet, but it can't hurt to have extra protein while you're healing. Uh, I also got some of these um, stress balls. Well, these are actually specifically like exercise balls. So I've got uh, three um, firmnesses. One more thing that I have is this uh, little lap table. So basically this just comes out like so. So you have a little table uh, for your meals or for whatever you're doing. Personally, I also got a recliner specifically right there uh, specifically for my recovery because uh, you really want something that's super comfortable if you're gonna be sitting all day um, and just you know relaxing and recovering so I thought uh, a recliner would be very much worth it and finally I think it's really important to have some kind of a binder or a folder uh, anything that you need to keep your documentation with you. Um, Montreal has a bunch of info packets that they give and they ask you to bring them with you. So having just some way to carry around all your documents is uh, important in my opinion. So that about covers it for uh, supplies. I do have uh, a, another list of stuff that I'm gonna have to bring. So in terms of clothes, you need to bring loose clothes, uh, comfortable stuff. Um, That is the gist of it. Let me know if I'm forgetting something. Um, and feel free to customize this list to your own preferences. So that about covers it for supplies. Um, yeah, one week out. <laughs> it's really exciting. I think uh, some of the anxiety that I had um, in the last few weeks has actually really dissipated. And now most of what I'm feeling is excitement. Um, honestly, though, just the waiting, uh, between getting my date and now has been the worst part. Um, just the waiting around, like, I feel like, yes, now I'm, I'm ready. I've got all my stuff together. 
Uh, I'm just kind of waiting for the day at this point. So I'm feeling pretty good, uh, feeling ready, and feeling excited. I think the next time I'm going to update will be the day before surgery. Um, I'm going to have a bunch of preparation to do the day before. So in terms of <laughs> bowel prep, in terms of uh, hair removal and stuff like that. Um, and the day before, I'm also going to be getting my house ready, you know, getting things sorted out so that I can be away from home for 10 days. So uh, with Montreal, you are in their ICU for three days. And then after that, you're in the recovery house for another seven. So I'm going to be away from home for 10 days in total. Uh, luckily, I don't have any travel days because I'm so close. But yeah, so you still want to prepare your house in any way that you can to make it more accessible for when you return. I'm lucky that my mother is going to be coming to stay with me uh, while I'm recovering. So she's going to be helping me out with meals, with everything, with dressings, everything. I'm going to let you go for now and I will see you soon.